Council members, we're going to start with our um, special um, meeting. Um, I would just like to say welcome, Mr. Ray Lewis, to the city of Patterson. Um, I'm happy that you're here with your, with your crew here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it over to Councilman Jackson, who had invited you to do this presentation um, for us here in the city of Patterson. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Council President. First of all, thank you, uh, gentlemen, for coming through the Patterson. Uh, council colleagues, thank you for, having, for allowing us this opportunity to bring this uh, concept forward. And more importantly, thank you to the young, young men in the room tonight. Uh, I intentionally invited both football teams to come through, not only to, uh, to have an opportunity to meet a former Baltimore Raven, future Hall of Framer, but also to see a gentleman who has played the game but in an entrepreneurial uh, spirit. So he's here now not as a football player but as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, which speaks volumes and it speaks volumes into the young people that we have in this room tonight. But we're going to push through this very quickly. I know we have some other items on the agenda. Um, can we get those lights? The lights so we can see the, the screen here? It's right here. So this, this here is just a preliminary recap on why and, 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 and just to express the need. And uh, then the gentleman will go into their presentation. It's, very, it's not very long, so I think we can uh, get a lot covered. So this is all about returning power to the people. And the brothers are here tonight just to express some, some, something in that direction, in that vein. And most of us know the history of Patterson, in fact, Councilman Say is probably an expert, a buff, if you will. Um, Patterson being an industrial capital city of the world, silk, first coat revolver, the first locomotive, we all know that stuff. But unfortunately, we have since then taken a, a huge turn. We've been labeled as the third worst city in the country, and we're working very hard to change that stigma. We've been violent crime, overrun with violent crime, poor job market, a business decline, and you have some uh, spyware. It happens. You want to roll right there. There you go. Well, you know, I'm sure somebody uh, sabotage. Sabotage. Hey. <laughs> so, again, uh, and an increase in drug activity. The housing market is taking a dramatic impact. We got a lot of blighted homes due to these circumstances, steady decline in uh, uh, the housing market, vacant and abandoned houses are on the uprise. The tax burden, I think it is the fifth word, it happens often. The tax burden has been spread harder on those, those members of our local community. So what are we here for? We, we're here to talk about power. Let's restore power to the people. Restoring power, direct cost savings that could impact our budget Create the creation of industry. We all know that when Patterson was at its height is because it was an industrial city. We had jobs in the, smart, in, the, in the city, which we don't have as often. And the creation of jobs and opportunity. Return the power to the people. A little while ago, we, so we, we, maybe a year or so ago, many, everybody was here. We sat through a presentation where some people came before the council to present a plan that was utilized $140 million in tax credits. And when you do the homework, do the research, it only returned about $600,000 annual return. That's back into, the, uh, into our, our rateables. So we, we would spend $140 million of tax credits and plus whatever else it would cost us to put up the building. And 600,000 roughly would be the return. This potential project, which the gentleman would have a lot more light to shed on, would cost less than half than that, a lot, a lot less than half, half than that, and it, had a far, it would have a far greater return, not just a return economically, but a, a huge impact on our community, on those young people in our community. So without further ado, I would like to introduce all, all of you to the gentleman you see in front, which consists of a company called Power 52. Thank you. So first and foremost, I want to say thank you all for having us here. Um, I'm a Pattersonian, born and raised in Patterson. Uh, my parents migrated from Puerto Rico in the 1960s. Worked in uh, the inner city factories here in Patterson. Uh, I went to school 16, I went to school 24. 
my playground was the School 24 parking lot as a kid. Um, I now own a engineering procurement and construction company. I have engineers that work for me. I control over $150 million worth of construction at this time. Uh, my biggest client is Amazon. Uh, I made it. And with that, my partners at Power52 Power um, have implemented a great program in the inner city of Baltimore, which influences inner city youth training, job creation, and also energy savings through renewable energy for the city. Um, when I first started with Power 52, uh, it, was, it was a rough road, and at the end of the day, a, you know, Ray's vision came true. And my, my whole thought was to bring that vision to the city of Patterson. So with that said, I want to introduce uh, Robert Wallace from Power 52. Good evening. Can everyone hear me OK? We usually uh, don't talk in the microphone unless we're doing a speech or a keynote or a dinner or something like that. Um, but we're happy to be here tonight. I mean, one of the things that Henry said is a parallel to what we see in Baltimore City. The same things you see in urban centers across the country are symptomatic of what we as a country have done to this point. I've been in renewable energy myself for the last decade. I've built over 120 megawatts of solar projects throughout the country, throughout the world. I'm an electrical engineer by trade from Baltimore, Maryland. And when we saw the opportunity in this renewable energy and green sector, our founders got together and said, how can we take the influence that we have, the experience that we have, and create jobs and opportunities for the youth in our own community? And that's how Power 52 started, so that when, I'm going to say babies like this, are exposed to clean and renewable energy, they can play in that space for the next 15, 20, 30 years. So we use our program as a launching pad for a career in renewable energy. Yeah. <clears throat> it's funny because it's, it's hard for me not to tell you and speak to everybody why I'm here tonight. God gave me a clear mission. It's not hard. It's simple, and it's to put God back on the throne. How do we do that? If it takes a village to raise one child, then it's going to take a whole lot of us to change the epidemic of what we see in our world today, of not having jobs, of kids having one dream, and hopefully that's athletics, and hopefully they make it. But there's a fact, 1% makes it. And, I, and after that 1%, that 99% is just floating out there in the atmosphere. And there's two things that I've always wanted to address with everybody. Because sooner or later, we have to figure out the difference between a brand and your identity. That's why we started this mission. Because what we saw in Baltimore is the identity is lost. Our kids don't have an imagination anymore. Because if you go into low-income neighborhoods, there's no, none to imagine for. That's why Baltimore stays on three streets and all of this violence in West Side Baltimore. But I beg to differ. Suppose we gave you no more excuses. Suppose athletics didn't work. Then something else has to kick in. Something else has to move you the way athletics moved you. And my cry. My cry is, if we don't educate them, if we don't put the proper things back in their hands and give them the power again, we don't have a chance. We're almost at 300 homicides in Baltimore as we speak. That's just the ones that's reported. That's, that's not even counting physical bodies. Because if we got into the physical body side, that's a whole other conversation. Power 52 was created for one reason, after the unrest of Freddie Gray. I caught, we, a friend introduced me to Rob, a friend of a friend. And the first time we sat down, we didn't have a business concept. But I said, what do we do? How do we go back to our neighborhoods and tell kids, yes, ma'am, is still, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, is still, yes, sir. You still must pull your pants up and carry yourself a certain way. How do we create that? You give them not a four or five dollar job. You give them an experience. You give them a science. 
Sola, if you haven't looked, I tell my sons this all the time because I got sons look like each and every one of you. Don't just use your phones for social media. Use your phones to find out how to survive in life when athletics ain't it for you. This, this. No. So, and that's where we are. And that's why the whole mission, Rob, you can kind of click into the mission. I'll kind of go into the mission. But the whole mission behind this, guys, I know, and I want you to, to understand when you sit down in a room and every night, I used to study, and you, every one of you guys understand this, I used to study running back numbers. And I used to study what quarterbacks threw for and, and on second down what they was doing and on first down what they were doing. And I can tell you if you're a lineman in the fourth quarter, if you get tired, if you put your right foot back too much as pass, if you put your left foot back, I can tell you all of that. But now I'm in a different fight. Now I'm burying nine-year-olds because mothers came. That's why I became president of A Mother's Cry. A Mother's Cry is an organization that has mothers that will never see their children again because of senseless violence. So if we don't change the narrative, they have no other choices and no other outlets. So my mission, I don't, I've never cared what people think about me. I care what God thinks about me. Amen. Amen. And right now we have a duty that we're supposed to be the forefathers. It's our duty. You guys have not failed. We failed you. Because we're supposed to have these things in places. That's all Power 52 is here to do. It's, it's, it's recreate what, 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 what we believe, what my brother believes. And I sat down and I said, Rob, I don't know that much about solar. So you're really going to have to educate me. And we sat on trains back and forth to New York. And instead of studying a playbook, I started studying clean energy and LED light and solar storage. And I said, wow, this can really help people. So we, get up, so we end up getting on a plane, we fly to Africa. I, wanted, I want you to think about numbers per watt, per watt in Africa. In here, we pay seven cents per watt for electricity. In Africa, they pay 75 cents per watt. So when you ask yourself, is it a want or is it a need? It's a need. But guess what we figured out? We couldn't save the whole country. All we can do is come save our home. And that's why I'm here in Patterson. I'm here in Patterson because this man was raised in Patterson. And this man said, we got a, we, the same problem you got in Baltimore, we got in Patterson. Kids are killing themselves. They're going to gangs way too fast in Baltimore. Gang life started nine years old. I just buried a nine-year-old the other day because his mother can't bury him. I got 275 mothers that's a part of a mother's cry. And every one of them got one thing in common. Their children are gone forever. And they walk by these empty rooms every night of their freaking life. And it will never be solved. Because that pain does not leave a mother. And when mothers stop fighting for our country, I promise you God coming back. Because that's when we have no more fight left. This is our identity. This is what we're trying to do with Power 52. Our mission statement, a minority-owned company, me and, this, me and this brilliant young man got together, and I took his wisdom, and we sat down with his father, and we said, teach me. And I'm riding on trains, and he started teaching me, like, what it means. Like, how many people can save all this money? And then you can take kids who got a, who's been in trouble and, and grab them from the streets and say, no, let me teach you, let me teach you something that can take you the rest of your life. You mess around in solar, you coming out, you start $19, $20 an hour. You ain't starting at five, four or five dollars like a McDonald's. Solar is the next booming industry. And, I, and, and if I don't say it, I'm wrong. But the place we went to with all the solar convention, I didn't see too many people with me that look like me and you. So we ain't in the business. But a lot of people who are making money is. A lot of people who are figuring it out is. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm more driven because God gave me something that I'm trying to share with our country. And our country, we got to wake up. And we have to start implementing programs that we have to get rid of the word program sooner or later. 
and start creating movements. Power 52 is a movement. It's not a program. I've saw too many programs fail. It's time to do something and mean it and be able to sleep at night and know that these babies have something that they can go to school and go through a 16-week program, what we offer them, and come out of that 16-week program and not wait for a job. We give you a job. We empower you. And so if you look at our team here, we have myself. Uh, I'm the technical guy. You have Ray Lewis in terms of the co-founder and vice president. Cherie Brooks, right? There's two separate sides of our organization. There's the not-for-profit, which is Power 52 Foundation, which does the workforce development and job training, and Power 52 Energy Solutions, which does the development, the EPC construction and the employment of the individuals that graduate. We also have Henry Cortez from Core Development here as part of our team. One thing I'll tell you about Henry, his background, my background, Ray's background, we all understand what youth are going through in this, these communities. We understand that we all look alike. I wear the same clothes you guys wear. Ray wears the same clothes. Henry and his children, we all have young children. And so when we saw this opportunity as a way to empower our communities but also create wealth, we said we had a responsibility to make sure this program is implemented. So we've taken here what Henry and I have done for the last decade in terms of renewable energy projects and now applying it to the communities that we live in. That's why it's for the community, by the community. We train youth in the communities we build in to build their own projects, right? So we don't come in and do a project and bring outside resources, outside labor, outside construction companies. We train people in the community they live in to build your own projects. So then the money and resources that we invest stay here in Patterson, right? Those who want to stay in construction, you open your own construction company. It stays in Patterson. The skills that you have that you learn through this process stays here. Right? So now you become an asset to the community. Now you can create a t your own tax base. Now you have the best schools in Patterson. And so we use programs like this. We use renewable energy because it's a vehicle. There's money behind it. There's a federal tax credit that covers 30% of the cost. Right? The cost that we can produce power for is cheaper than what you can buy it for. So the business model's there. The question is, how do we make sure those resources stay in the communities that everyone wants to serve? So many times, contractors and businesses come into Baltimore and they invest and build projects and they bring in resources from Lancaster and they bring in guys from North Carolina and they partner with guys from Western Maryland. None of the money stays in Baltimore. You have a $100 million project None of the money stays in any of the businesses that are located in the communities we serve. And so our mission was to change that. That's our responsibility. So if you look here at some of the things that we're, we're, um, we are projecting for the city, we're looking at a 20 megawatt solar farm. Why do we need a project? Any organization has to make money, right? In order to do training, you have to make money. Resources. So what we do is, we tie projects to training programs, exact same thing in Baltimore City. We did a 1.2 megawatt system with living classrooms, and we're doing a 20 meg with Under Armour. That program and the work that we do of Under Armour funded the training program. So last year, we started our training program. We put our youth through that program, and now they build the project that we did for living classrooms. Now they're building the project that we're doing for Under Armour, right? Youth look just like you look just like us, returning citizens, vets, vets come home, can't find jobs, so they retool through our program, and now they're in the renewable energy sector, women, right, youth, guys who come right out of high school and say, maybe college isn't the best fit for me, maybe college isn't what I want to do right now, let me try this renewable energy sector. All these types of individuals have come through our program, all graduate with the certifications, all have their NAPSEP. National Association of Certified Energy Practitioners, NABS have certification for solar, all have their OSHA 10, right? All have their NCCER construction certification. So they don't just come out of a program and say, I've been trained. You have credentials that whether or not you come with Power 52 or you go work with local utility, you are now creating your career. And that's the goal of the program, not just to train them and have them come out, but give them tools to succeed. That's the focus. 
So if you look at what we're doing, you're also going to have dependable power for the city in terms of dependable electricity. You guys know all this stuff in terms of renewable energy. Energy independence. You know this is the revolution. Energy industry is the fifth industrial revolution. Think about it. You see all the pushback right now we get from coal plants, right? You see how President Trump is pushing back on some of these green initiatives and the carbon. Car you see all these storms we're having right now? You notice we had a lot more hurricanes this year than we have had in the past? You notice how it was, it was 70 or 80 degrees earlier this week and now it's like 40 something degrees, right? Something's going on. That's the, that's the environment. If we don't change this now, it won't affect us. It won't affect you. It'll affect your kids and your grandkids who are going to have to deal with the problems that we have an opportunity to solve here today. And so that's why we use Power 52 to do that. If you look at our training program, it's a certified training program, just got approved by the Maryland Higher Education Council to be the first career private charter school for renewable energy in Maryland. The first. The second not-for-profit. So you can see there's an initiative here behind green jobs and green training. And that's what Power 52 does. If you look here in our classroom, we have classrooms located in Baltimore City. We have classrooms located in Elkhart City. Same structure we've done in Patterson. There will be a school here in Patterson that trains youth and takes them through this program to be certified to build these projects. So by the time these projects start, they'll be built with resources here and developed in Patterson. Keep going. Um, eight critical milestones for our program, right? One, on-the-job training. One of the things that we're, we're very particular on is on-the-job training. It's one thing to sit in the classroom and read a book. You can tell how many people are going to pay attention if I open a book and say, read these five pages. Raise your hands. Anybody? Right? You're going you to read it? I'm going to hold you to that. But if I take you out to a solar farm, to a field, and show you how it works, where you're plugging up wiring, you're plugging up batteries, you're looking at angles of incidence, you're looking at power losses, and you can see it, now it's real, right? Not only that, we're building in the communities we serve. Let me ask you a question. If you imagine your neighborhood, and let's say you had a project that was right down the street on the corner, that's called a block down, that you built, your sweat and tears, your panels, your engineering, your design, how important is that to you? Would you let anyone tear it up in your neighborhood? No. Would you let someone mess with it when it's saving money for your community, for your parents? where now their electricity bill was half of what it was before, you were protected, right? It's an asset. It's an asset. And so what we do is empower you to be an asset to your community and help build the community you actually live in. And that's one of the goals of Power 52. If you look here at the pictures, you can see some of the guys that are working. Has anyone been to a solar farm? Anybody been to a solar farm? One person, one person back here, two people right here. Most people have them, right? When you say solar, they say, what is this? Take a, take a look at this picture up here. You can see the guys working. These solar panels essentially take, sun, take sunlight and convert it to electricity, right? I'll give you an analogy. Those who drive, what do you have to put in your car for it to go? Gas, right? So you know each week you have to budget X amount of dollars to put gas in your car so you can go somewhere. Imagine if the gas was free. What would you do differently? The, the sun is free. Save money. What else? You drive everywhere, right? So the same concept. The sunlight is free. When the sun stops shining, we got a bigger problem than just electricity and training, right? It is a renewable resource that creates electricity with a sustainable source, then that relates to cash flow and money. So if you can make electricity for yourself, what does that mean? You can power more stuff, right? That means that you can go further, right? That's why the utility is so stuck on keeping that electricity under their wraps. As long as they can charge you 12, 13, 14 cents per kilowatt hour for power, they got you, right? That's, that's probably one of your major bills each month. But imagine if that bill was a half or a third of that. Where else could that money be reallocated into training, food, medicine, you name it, besides electricity? So that's part of the goal of Power 52. The goal of this project would bring about $64 million to Patterson. $64 million would come here to the city, to you guys who are building, to local businesses who want to do, participate in the construction, to manufacturers in the area, you name it. 
Roughly 150 to 200 jobs in training will come out of this project. These are young men and women who will come out making anywhere from $19 to $20 an hour. These young men and women will also have benefits, so they'll have health care. So it isn't 1099 labor, you're actually a W-2. What does that mean, young people? You can build credit. What does credit help you do? Buy stuff, right? Do you think people buy these huge buildings with cash? They buy credit. They have credit. And that's what you do when you can start a career. You want to ask something? Yeah, keep going. Yeah. So the core values here is to lead our team, the companies that we are serving and the best value of our solution. This is information about our company and what we do. We've been doing this project, these kind of projects for a long time. We've done them in New York. We've done them in Maryland. We've done them in North Carolina. We've done them in Florida, FAMU. We're doing them in Utah. We've done them in California. We've done them in the island of Kauai, in Hawaii. Ivory Coast, West Africa, Dominican Republic. We just recently built a microgrid system, which is a battery storage system, right? Powered by the sun, it harnessed the electricity and the batteries for an orphanage. So when the hurricanes came through Dominican Republic, our orphanage was the only facility that had electricity in the Dominican Republic in that village. So that shows you how when you have sustainable renewable power, it can help facilitate life, even in natural disasters, even in these hurricanes. And these are the type of projects that we look for and build. Part of the work that you will be doing, racking installations, right? Module placement. Where do you place the module? How do you tie it in? DC wiring, which is direct current. AC wiring, interconnection. These are all the things that you'll learn as part of the training program that these youth will learn when they come out of our program. One of the focuses that we have here and issues that we have in Patterson is lack of land, right? And so one of the things that Henry and his team have done is done a, print, a preliminary analysis of where we can put these systems. There's not a bunch of open fields. There's not a bunch of green space. However, there's a lot of roofs, right? There's a lot of parking canopies, right? Manufacturing facilities with large roofs. Contaminated land, landfills. Pieces or parcels of land that have no other value besides possibly solar, right? You can't grow a farm on landfill. You can't build a house, but you can turn it into a revenue center for the city of Patterson through a lease. And that's our goal as part of this program. So we looked at a few locations, just a, just a few snapshots of one of the landfills here in Patterson as well as a rooftop. We also looked into more, how do we make sure that Patterson is a leader in the green economy? If you notice, Jersey has one of the highest, we call renewable energy credit or SREC values in the country. So every megawatt hour of power you produce has a carbon credit value that you can sell on a market. It's almost like a stock market, right? And, and then right now in New Jersey, the value is what? About $195, $195 for every megawatt. So let me tell you, give you an example. Imagine if I had one light bulb and I left it on for an hour, right? It, it used X amount of electricity. Imagine if I told you, if you turn that light bulb on, I'll give you 200 bucks every hour it's on. So every hour that the system is producing power is creating these credits that can be sold. Between those credits and the investment tax credit, it gets your power down to between what? Four or five cents? Not that low. Seven cents here? About okay, about seven cents. That's a 40% savings off of what you're currently paying. If you look at Washington, D.C., the escrow values are so high, the electricity they're doing is free. So they'll give you a free electricity because the carbon credits are worth $400 per megawatt hour. Right? And so we focus on areas that have high carbon credit, that have the investment, the investment tax credit, but also that have the cities that look like Baltimore. Our mission is to help low-income people and individuals have access to renewable energy through Power 52. Monday we'll be in Chicago, exact same conversation. We've been down in South Carolina, exact same conversation. We've been down in Atlanta, Georgia, exact same conversation. Every city has a Martin Luther King Boulevard, for the most part, right? Every city. And so we look at that as an opportunity to make sure that our mission, our message, gets across the country. And that's what we do at Power 52. Real quick, here are some of our projects that we've done uh, throughout the country. And I'll leave this with you guys so you can take a look at it. We've done everything from fields. You can see landfills here in Massachusetts that we've done that are ballasted systems, Hank and I. Coppin State rooftop system, 500 kW. Uh, site here in Orange, another rooftop system. You can see here on the ballasted side, what a ballasted system means is that there's no penetrations. So that's what we use for landfills. It's essentially a cement block sits on top of the cap. 
secures the cap to make sure there's no penetration, and then the solar panels sit on top. So that allows you to reuse landfills or contaminated industrial land for solar generation. That's how we do it. We've also done work with Fort Campbell, uh, which is a military installation. Um, one of the things Fort Campbell wanted to do was satellite communication. One thing you cannot have in a war is not be able to communicate. And so our system backs up their communication system through solar and then adding storage. And that's a project actually Henry built himself that just came online two months ago, just came online down at Fort, at Fort Campbell. Another thing we focus on is what's called resiliency centers. Resiliency centers are similar to what I described in Dominican Republic, where you have generation and storage on site. Why is that important? If you were to have a natural disaster here in Patterson, and you lost all that electricity, where would you go? Is there a plan for where you can go and, and charge your cell phone? Is there a plan for those who need an oxygen machine where they can go plug in an oxygen machine? Is there a plan for those who need, who have medication needs to be chilled, where can they go? So we've established a program where every project we build, we build a resiliency center in the community. And that resiliency center becomes a hub for where in terms of natural disasters, the community can go to charge their phones, to get heat, to get AC, to chill their medication, for water. They also become location for first responders, police, fire department, food bank. And so one of the things we look to do here in Patterson would be to establish these resiliency centers strategically throughout the city so that in case of a natural disaster, flood, uh, the Superstorm Sandy, that the community has access to shelters and electricity in, terms, in times of need. I'm going to show you this quick video. This is actually a project that Henry built here in, uh, this is New Jersey. So, so this here is a seven and a half megawatt rooftop system in Carteret, New Jersey. It is the largest rooftop system in New Jersey. We just closed this out and built it um, about two months ago. And it's, it's a ionic rooftop system because I think it's second to the largest in the nation and it's here in New Jersey. And that's what we want to implement here in the city of Patterson. It's really interesting because, you know, when you hear all the business side of things, and I think we're going to come to an end because I want us to understand something, right? If you go across the United States of America, 42% of Afro-American kids are, are educated in all high-poverty schools, both elementary and secondary. Look, at, look at just, and, I mean, and, and you know what? Men and women may lie, but numbers don't. And that's the fact where I want us to start getting to, to why I keep telling these kids, start picking up your phones and start paying attention to numbers that really matter one day. Not how many followers I got and all that, right? But I want you to look at something. 31% of Native American children are educated in high poverty schools, right? We're talking about 6% of white children are educated in high poverty schools. Just look at the numbers, how, and this is where I go back to. If we do not figure out a way, not only to put God back on the throne, but only to, to implement prayer, that we all start praying as a community together, these numbers never change. These numbers actually only get worse. And so our mission for coming here to, to, to Patterson tonight is one reason. God said go, and we said go. we are on our way. But we cannot leave here without somebody realizing that those kids are our future. Not the check I can put in my pocket. When I get back on this truck and when I go home, when I get on this plane tonight, I'm going home and prayfully that one, two, or three, or four of these children saw a different vision and caught a glimpse of an imagination that I once sat in these same seats with the dream of hopefully I make it out of the hood. Hopefully I can pay for my mother a house. Hopefully I can find a, a good job one day that'll keep me out of trouble so I won't join games. Hopefully I can choose that. But I was so driven, I was so driven that I just didn't complete football. I went back and got my degree. I graduated from college. I put my paper in my mama's hand. I still say yes ma'am and no ma'am. But what I'm begging us to do it's let's do our kids a real favor. Let's 
let's, when we go to sleep at night, let's make sure that they okay. We all right if they okay. We'll find another job. We'll find another opportunity. But we need enough of us to make sure that our baby's okay. Because right now, I'm telling you, my, with the things that's going on in our world, if we don't find movements like this to invest in, then what are we letting our kids invest in? Because social media got them so distracted. I got kids myself, man, and it blows my mind. You know, I'll give you a quick 30-second analogy. If somebody walked up to you, if, if to any one of these gentlemen sitting here, if somebody walked up to you 15 years ago and told you that they wanted you to post your life every day for absolutely free, would you do it? Absolutely not. But we do it every day. Without a solution. Without an economic value. That's why Facebook has likes and followers. But it contradicts what the Bible says. The Bible says it's better to be a leader than a follower. Right. It's better to be respected than liked. That's, right. That's what the good book says. Amen. How many people in that crew right there know what B-I-B-L-E stands for? Do you know what B-I-B-L-E stands for? Tell me what it stands for. That's, that says Bible. Tell me what it stands for. B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. And if we ain't read that yet, if we ain't tried to read that, if we don't read Psalms and Proverbs and, and know what David went through and know why Job had to go through the things he went through, man, I promise y'all, life hard. Life hard without a foundation. Power 52 is a foundation. It's a movement. And we came in today to introduce this to Patterson. To hopefully work with Patterson. To hopefully what we're trying to do in Baltimore is slow down this crime in Baltimore and give these kids a real future. It's the same thing we're trying to do in Paris. So I want to say thank you guys for this. So first, I appreciate the opportunity, uh, council members, and the patience, I think, absolutely. Yes, sir. Fellas, let's give it up to Mr. Ray Lewis. He has an extremely busy schedule. He took, a he took the time out. He has to catch a flight right now. So he's headed out. And uh, he's, he's going to be back. He'll be back. But Madam Mayor, uh, Madam BA, council members, this is moving Patterson into the, into the future. This is getting ahead of the curveball. This is setting trends and not following trends. I just want to cap it off by just talking about a couple key little features. There's an opportunity here. We saw presentations. We, we saw several presentations on the tax credits that we have available. This is a way in which we, Patterson can own its own electrical plant. And, and the irony is, this is how the city was built. We currently have a waterfall that's generating power now. To add this to that just takes it to the next level. And we're not talking about powering the entire city. Just something simple, the street lights. Every year we spend $3 million on street lighting alone. Close to $800,000 on powering our governmental buildings. $3 million. If we could take that savings from $3 million, it'll be over a million dollars a year that we can take that and put back into youth programming in our community. So I'm not going to hold it any longer. Madam President, I appreciate the opportunity. I know we have to move on. We got another item. But gentlemen, I appreciate it. And I, I hope that uh, we'll have the opportunity. You know what, you guys want to? other council members. Thank you, um, um, Councilman Jackson. Thank you um, um, to the Power 52.